welcome back for some more gas mask fun. We'll be taking a look today at something a little bit more modern, and that would be the US M40 series gas mask. These uh, have a fairly recent history. They were developed first in the 1980s as a replacement for the M17 mask, which had a number of flaws that this mask tried to remedy. The production was in development, went rather slowly though, so by the time of the first Gulf War in 1991, the M17 was still in service and the M40 was not ready for Desert Shield, Desert Storm. It wasn't really until the mid-90s that major issues of this mask took place and that they started to replace the M17. Because of the flaws in these masks, though, they ended up having a relatively short career with the U.S. compared to at least some other masks like the M17. By 2010, the M50 Joint Services respirator had already been approved and started to be issued later on in greater numbers as the decade went on, and it was more likely to find these masks in places like National Guard or Reserve Units which I can confirm was definitely true a few years ago and is probably still is now. And I don't doubt that there's stockpiles of these out there in case there was some kind of emergency where large numbers of masks would be needed quickly. But other than that, the uh, basic M40 is on its way out of service with the uh, U.S. Army and Marine Corps now. And indeed the Air Force and Navy are supposed to be using the M50 mask also. So first let's try to get it on and we'll go from there. First thing to probably note is that this actually is an M40 and it's a fairly old issue with that. The stamp on the side indicates that it was made by Mine Services in 1992 and this is the original model. We'll talk some more about the improvements that were made later. So this is definitely an older version of the mask. And like many others, it came in three sizes, small, medium, and large. This one happens to be a medium, and if you've been watching my big head all along, you know that probably I would usually wear a large. I've found I can get by with a medium in this mask, and that's what I've got to do this video with at the moment, so that's what we'll go with. But yeah, ordinarily, I'd probably rather be wearing a large. But we don't always get what we want, do we? Well, we've got a good seal though, so that's a good place to start. The features of the mask, as you can probably see in the central area, we have a fairly large voice meter. Got an exhale, exhale valve, along with a drinking tube. Switch from the M17, we have the filter canister. That's a 40 millimeter NATO standard. This is not a U.S. Army issue canister. We'll cover that a little bit later. And this canister could be positioned on either side of the mask. And the side that doesn't have the mask has another voice meter on it. And as you can probably see on this one, it's a fairly large flat piece. And with that large flat piece, it was easy to use a telephone with it as you could place the speaker right up against it without a problem and people could more easily hear you when using a field telephone or things like that. But overall that main improvement over the M17 was using the filter canister instead of the big cheek filters. As the filter canister it's fairly easy to change in contaminated conditions with just a quick decontamination and swap. Wearing an M17 mask pretty much had to find a place you could take off the entire thing. And it wasn't easy or quick to change the filters inside it either. And of course, by using the NATO standard filter canister, you can easily swap supplies with your allies. 
which might be important in a wartime situation. So what was the mask issued with? Usually you get the standard carrier bag. This one again is a very early type and they went through several evolutions before switching to the M50 mask. If you're lucky when you were shopping for your mask, the previous owner or whoever you got it from it still included the operator manual with it. A handy device as it's filled with all kinds of useful advice and cautions and warnings on it. Everything from how to properly store and wear it and things you shouldn't do with it. I don't have either of them on right now, but there are also two sets of outsert eye covers that were issued with a mask also. A clear set and a gray tinted set for sunny conditions. These would cover up the eyepieces to give them extra protection. There was also usually a small package of chemical paper detector that you could uh, dip in various liquids or if you got sprayed with something it would change color to give you an idea what you might have been sprayed with. Along with a personal decontamination kit that allowed you to clean off your glove or your areas around the filter canister or things like that in the field in a quick situation where you didn't have access to heavier decontamination supplies. There was also a waterproof bag that if you were crossing a stream or something you were supposed to put the mask and the other accessories inside the bag and then remove it when you had finished crossing the water obstacle because getting the water and stuff is generally not a good thing. Then we come to the filter canisters. <laughs> As I said, I'm wearing a modern one that's fully NBC rated that was manufactured in Italy about a year or so ago by a company called Mestel Safety. Like I said, they meet all NATO specs for NBC protection and it's recent manufacturer, so you know you're getting a good item. The issue mask canister that came with these was called the C2 and it came in a small can that was bigger and about twice as tall but it kind of looked like a big tuna can and the C2 canister was black and you can see it's fairly small. The problem with the C2 canisters when they were issued is they had a lot of chromium in them that was being used as an additive to counter certain agents that might be uh, breathed. But chromium also is toxic. So eventually the army decided to pull these canisters. As much you might want to have the same kind of problem the Soviets did with arrows with asbestos and everything. So you may find these old black C2 canisters out there in the can. But you really shouldn't use them. They're all old and expired anyway and probably a chromium hazard. They later on issued a canister that was designated C2A1 that looked basically the same. I don't have a sample here, except it was green, and they changed some of the parts inside it so that the chromium was gone, and it still did the job it needed to. Some of those canisters are still in date now, but if you find them, I probably still wouldn't recommend using them. If you intend on using this map for any serious survival or prepping, get yourself a modern in-date filter canister. Finally, the last thing, and that brings us to some of the M40's serious problems, was the hood. So what we're going to do is have a sweet transition here. I actually have to install the hood again. I can't do that any short length of time. So we'll have to cut away. And when we come back, we'll have the hood on. And we'll talk about the hood 
in the variance of the mask and some of the problems it tried to solve. Catch you in a minute. All right, we've got the hood on now. You can see it looks like a fairly standard hood of the kind that the U.S. has been issuing with masks for quite some time. There is one major difference you might have noticed though, and that this is this large black rubber area that's covering the actual mask. That is permanently attached to the hood, and the reason for the second skin is the M40 series masks were made out of silicone rubber instead of the more common butyl rubber. Butyl is usually used because it's highly chemical resistant, but it has the drawback that it's fairly stiff and inflexible. Silicone, on the other hand, is very flexible, easy to put on, easy to wear, easy to get a good seal with, but it has a major drawback, and that's why the Sum 40 series masks needed that second skin, because silicone is not very resistant to blister agents, specifically things like mustard gas or lewisite. So issuing this special hood to the early series M40s was the first solution. Later on, a couple of other solutions were introduced with improved versions of the mask. They changed the second skin piece a couple of times. But in essence, the second style was almost like an old-fashioned hockey mask that went over the outside of the mask and covered it to give the needed protection. And although it was removable, generally the mask was worn with it always on, even without a hood. And to accommodate the switch in style of those, since Obviously, the hood with all this extra rubber attached to it was no longer necessary. This open face style hood was introduced instead, and that fitted over the mask easily, even with the second skin on it, and gave you the necessary head and shoulder protection. I would add these hoods are good to pick up when you can find them also because they'll almost work with just about any other kind of gas mask out there to give you that head and shoulder protection you don't get from wearing a mask alone. There are certain kind of things you may either be dangerous or just not want to get onto your hair or shoulders or clothing or stuff like that. So these open faced hoods are a good deal when you can find them. As I mentioned, several attempts were made to improve the M40 mask over its service career. The major one being the M40A1 variant. The main change there, besides the second skin and the hood, the oral nasal cup inside the mask was redesigned to fit better and work better. This mask was also issued in a configuration that was appropriate for armored vehicle crewmen, where it was known as the M42, and that had a long hose attachment to one side that led to a filter and adapter that could be plugged into a vehicle's collective NBC protection system. Now vehicles like the M1 are protected when they're buttoned up, but the crew still has masks in case the protection fails or they have to leave the vehicle. And the M42 variant of this mask was the one that did that job. One other variant worth noting was that these were manufactured privately for non-federal government agencies and other users to buy by the 3M company. And the 3M masks were absolutely identical to the military M40s as far as their appearance and accessories. Exactly the same, except usually on one of the rubber straps besides the 3M identifier on it. It was usually stamped also prominently that it was not government property. That way nobody could come along and claim that you acquired your mask from illegally or stolen or anything like that. 
I made it clear so that people like police departments, civil defense, industrial users, or just the average person on the street could legally buy an M40 mask if they wanted to. And the free M was where it had that little extra marking. But otherwise, they were identical to these military versions. Now, it's pretty readily available on eBay and the other auction sites and places out there, surplus dealers, as the M50 mask has increasingly replaced it the last few years. Obviously, I would recommend you not search out one of the old M40s like these unless you're a collector. If you have your heart set on it, one should definitely take a look at the M40A1 model instead. And if you're going to spend top dollar on a military issue mask or something on the high end, I probably wouldn't have the M40 too high on my personal list. Mostly because of that problem with the corrosive effect from certain kind of chemicals. You need to be aware of that and have the appropriate parts for your mask. And even then it would probably still make me wonder. If you're just a collector, I think you might face some CN or CS tear gas. Plan on using some of that yourself. Or for biological or radiological stuff, it's probably fine. Otherwise, I'd probably search out something like the Avon FM12 or M50s have started to become more common and cheaper on the secondary market, too. Last year, I was able to buy an excellent condition M50 set, for example, with a bunch of accessories for less than $200. And if you were looking for something current or modern, probably one of those other masks would be a better choice for you. That about wraps it up for this time. Hopefully I'll be back for some more action in the not too distant future. If you like the channel, give me a thumbs up and thanks for watching. Bye.